and doing what I've been called, what I've been called to do. And um, this morning, I want to, I want to preach on the influence of boldness. Say that with me. A boldness. If anything that our world needs today is we need, we need to learn to have people that know how to be bold. We've got too many cowards in our world. Everybody is offended. Yeah. You know, uh, well, you're going to find out this morning in the house of God, first of all, offense does not work. So I'm just going to be straightforward. If you're the kind of person that easily offended, get over it. Psalms 119, verse 165 says, Happy are they that love his law, and nothing shall cause them to be offended. So I want to talk about the influence of boldness. You're going to hear that phrase over and over and over. Take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 13. That's where we'll start out. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, they were common men, they were shocked, they were astonished. They noticed, they recognized, they perceived that these men had been with Jesus. Interesting verse. I submit to you this morning that a church that is bold is evidence that that church has been with Jesus. Amen? Amen. You want to win, you got you to you understand boldness. I don't have time to get into the whole principle of buying and selling, but if you want to be a good buyer, you got to be able to be bold. You got to ask for it. Let me let me lay the foundation before we get into Acts chapter uh, chapter four verse thirteen and on. In Acts chapter three, we find that Peter and John they went into the temple. They were going to church, and for years there was a lame man that was set at the gate called Beautiful, and he was sit there to ask for alms. In other words, in other words, everybody look at me. His family they were taking advantage. Of his handicap. Rather than go to job, I'll put my poor crippled son out there for years. Let them ask for alms, and they can get more. We, we, you know, we can get more money if we send him to work. Interesting passage here. Matter of fact, I preached this message a long time ago, and I and I called it the lame man that got fired. <laughs> <laughs> He, lo he lost his job. <laughs> Every week they would put this crippled man in the back of the minivan. And they'd drive him down to the temple. It's interesting. They took him to the temple because they knew that temple people were easy marks. Wow. <laughs> Hello? So for years, that's where the income was. Peter and John, we find out later that they were uneducated and, and just common men. But they went and they saw the man and they looked at the crippled man and they asked for alms. Interesting, in chapter, you can read chapter 3. Interesting what they first said to him. Look on us. Let's make some eye contact. So many of you know what I'm talking about because when you come up to a, a light and there's someone out there at, with a sign as their arms, you kind of look the other way until the light changes because you don't, you don't want to, because if, if, if you make eye contact with them, something just happens to us. Am I right? Come on, you know I'm right. So, but these guys said just the opposite. These guys said to this crippled man, look on us. Let's make some eye contact. And they look, and the man looked at him. So now they're making eye contact. And Peter and John says, silver and gold have I none, but what I got. Oh, my God, I like this. 
what he had, the crippled man didn't even know he wanted. Silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, I'm going to give you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. That's, that's all in, the, in chapter 3. Then it says that Peter reached out and grabbed him by the right hand. Interesting that it says the right hand. The right hand is the hand of authority. He was going to teach this crippled man how to take authority over his lameness. Hello? I'm going to give you authority to walk again. I'm going to give you authority to get strength in your legs again. Peter and John said, I don't have any money. I have no silver. I have no gold. But I've got something that's deposited in me that will change your life. Yes. Glory to God. It's time for the church to be bold. It's time for us to say to a hopeless generation, I know you, you, know, you want a free handout. I don't have much to give you, but what I do have, I'm going to give you. I'm, I, I've got authority in me that I'm going to restore your hope. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you what this world has taken away from you. Interesting. All oh, that's in chapter 3. So they, so they heal the lame man. And the church folks got mad at them. <laughs> the religious leaders. They got mad at them. Oh, this, this still, still happens today. Church folks get mad when people start operating in faith. Church folks get mad when they start doing what no one else is doing. People have gotten mad at me in the past year because... I didn't bow down. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, to the, I, I, I'll tell you what, I'm snubbing my nose in the face of our society. <laughs> Silver and gold have I number. What I got, I'm going to give you the name of Jesus, America. Rise up and walk. Yeah. Get your hope back. Get your dreams back. Then it says, and, and now we're going back to verse, chapter, chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they saw, everybody say saw. saw. Boldness is not something that you feel. Boldness is something that is visible. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Let, let's, let's go back to verse three, uh, chapter 3 for a minute. Peter and John did what they did at the temple. And they did it in the face of murderers. Hello? Yep. These murderers had just killed Jesus. Yep. And these, the, the, these unlearned, uncommon men that knew Jesus, they, they said in the face of mur murderers, uh, it's really, it's, it's an interesting passage. He says, he tells them, he says, you got to get this. The, the Jesus that you killed, he's very much alive. Glory to God. And he says, and there is no other name whereby men can be saved. And he said that in the face of murderers. That's boldness. They saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that the that perceived men, their eyes came open, they had a perception. They were astonished because they recognized that those men had been with Jesus. There's a question for you. Do people realize and recognize the fact that you've been with Jesus? Are you really making an impact and influence on the world? Or are you just trying to, try, trying to blend in? Bold people never blend in. <laughs> bold people, bold people always stand out. We had a chance yesterday to, to, to take uh, uh, Brother Vall around Paso and went over to Cambria and just had a good time. And, you know, we're, we're standing out there by the beach and this woman that she comes out, she's probably eight months pregnant and we're out there taking pictures and I'm, I'm turning around and this brother says, ma'am, can I pray for you and your unborn child? I said, yeah. <laughs> I, 
I stood back and took a picture of him laying hands on this woman. It's called boldness. I want God, I want God to raise up out of this house. People that are not religious people, but people that are spiritual rebels that will do what they can and turn our world upside down. Amen. Amen. People that are going to stand up and say, you know, I, I am not just saved. I've been born again and God saved me to give me power. Amen. If the two of you knew what happened three weeks ago when you stood right here and gave your life to Jesus. For the past 15 years, the devil's been trying to take you out. The devil's been trying to kill you, but publicly, it was bold for you to raise your hand. I need a, I need a Savior. You gave your life to Jesus. I can, I, I'm telling you, you'd be amazed at what it's going to look like five years from now if you stay faithful to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, now these leaders, they were surprised. They were shocked. They looked at Peter and John and realized that these, that they were just typical peasants, uneducated, utterly ordinary people. But they had extraordinary confidence. These leaders had recognized that they had been with Jesus. Wow. Wow. So what, so what do we know about this whole situation? Well, we know that they weren't impressed because of Peter and John's education. Because they didn't have much. They weren't impressed with their religious credentials because they didn't have much. They weren't impressed with anything that they did in the background. What these religious leaders have noticed was the fact that these Spirit-filled men were spirit-filled with boldness, and they were not ashamed to say that I know Jesus. Amen. Some of you followed me on Facebook last night. I was out in my yard, and the sky was real nice. had some nice clouds, and I went out there, and I've got a 40-foot American flag just blowing in the wind, and I went out and I zeroed in on it, and I, and I, and I put the caption there, I'm a proud conservative American, glory to God. You know, and I'm flying this flag, you know, uh, uh, in, in my country, in my yard. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, you do that, you might get yourself in trouble. <laughs> okay, so what's the deal? <laughs> God didn't save you to make you comfortable. God saved you to make you dangerous. I want to say it again. God did not save you just so you can go to a nice cushy church and go through religion. God saved you to make you dangerous. You are the people that God has wanted to turn this world upside down. And we got to pray, God, give me a spirit of boldness. I don't want to cause a fight. I'm, I, I'm not trying to antagonize anybody. But when a man or woman knows who they are and knows what they got in their spirit, let me tell you something, the spirit of and intimidation cannot come against men and women that have been baptized in boldness. Glory to God. I tell you, I don't think I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm all that in a bag of chips and a soft drink. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. I want you to get this. Really consider the context of what is being said here. Peter and John had just healed this crippled man whole crowd gathered around them after he healed the cripple man. That's, 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 in, that's, in, that's in chapter 3. Now watch this. Peter and John seize that moment to preach the gospel. See, sometimes God will put you in a certain place and people will gather around you. Tell you what, God has given you an audience. They seize the moment to preach the gospel. And the gospel message. <laughs> it's amazing. And then after they were arrested and thrown in jail, Peter realized, I got another audience. <laughs> <laughs> he preached to the religious leaders in chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. 
Hmm. Again, I just want you to, I want you to realize the one he was preaching to, these were the very murderers that had just killed Jesus. But they refused to cower. My, my, my heart goes out to the church. 2021, we should be the most bold, the most powerful organizations of people in the world, the church. But the church has become cowards. I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm doing this over Facebook, and, and I got some pastor friends out of mine out there. I know they're saying they love God, but many of them are a bunch of cowards. Oh, I can't do that. If you're not going to ride, get out of the saddle. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hmm. Peter and John says, he's, he, re, he reminded the ones he was preaching to, you know Jesus, the one that you crucified. The one that you crucified, but the same one that God raised up. There is no salvation in any other name under heaven why men, why, why, whereby men, everybody say must, must be saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. I was sharing with Brother Fred yesterday something. You guys heard me say this to me, and I want to say it again. There are a million ways to come to Jesus. I know that, that's going to mess up some of your theology. There is a million ways to come to Jesus. Some come through su attempted suicide. Some come through alcoholism. Some come through drug addiction. Some come, some come through a divorce. Some come through uh, uh, um, imprisonment. There's a million ways to get to Jesus. But there's only one way to get to the Father. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. The no one comes to the Father but by me. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit will bring us to Christ. He doesn't care where you have gone. He will find you where you're at. He will show you his love and his grace. Glory to God. He will raise you up, and you'll find out that the boldness that you made to accept Christ is going to be the entrance that's going to bring you into the, into the Father's presence. Wow. I find that boldness and courage is a response to the sovereignty of God where fear surrenders to the demonic we'll say it again boldness and courage is a response to the sovereignty of god but fear always surrenders to the demonic faith i mean fear is faith in the demonic fear is faith is faith in the demonic but those that have invited Christ in their life and have made up their mind that I am not going to just suffer being a church person, I really just want to know God. God will set a fire in you. You'll square your shoulders back and become a man and become a man of God, a man of holiness, a man of integrity. These religious leaders, they, they just didn't know what to do with Peter and John. One thing they could not do, they could not deny their boldness. So what was the secret of Peter and John? They really got saved. Hello? Let me tell you something. Just because you go to church don't mean you're saved. And just because you utter things out of your mouth don't mean you're saved. But we make, a, we make up our mind, you know what? God has positioned me in this dark world to be a light. Amen. As a matter of fact, the darker the climate, the greater the light. Okay? So quit being afraid to tell people about Jesus. Quit being fearful. In, in, in the, the stuff that's going on in our world today and the consideration of our world, there's so many signs that are, 
that are diminishing the impact on our Christianity. We look at the advancement of, of secularism and, and uh, our crumbling, crumbling society and the crumbling of our, of our social institutions. Institutions that really, that, that stood, that stood for thousands of years. And we wonder why Christians have lost their influence. I'm going to tell you why. Because they have put a wall between them and Jesus. I can see him, but I'm not close to him. You know, I, anybody understand big time wrestling? You know, <laughs> I think that's a, the John Cena syndrome. You can't see me. <laughs> I, I, know, I know you didn't get that. <laughs> Holy Ghost will give you divine revelation later on. <laughs> you, can be a, you, know, you can be around Jesus and not be with him. Christianity is more than a religious hobby. It's a lifestyle of change. It's a serious lifestyle of change. It's us raising the standards. It's, 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 it's allowing the Holy Spirit, Spirit to produce a, a dynamic power that will transform ordinary men into bold witnesses for Christ. But yet it has nothing to do with degrees and cemeteries. I mean seminaries. Strength and courage is, and, and, and integrity. Those are the earmarks of, of who God is. And God wants to do that. Yeah, God wants to be there. I'm going to tell you something. I wrote it down here. God has no cowards commanding his army. Amen. Hello? I, I'm not speaking for myself. But I'm going to tell you, don't ever get in line behind somebody that's fearful. Amen. God never, God never brings men and women that are fearful to command his army. Real quickly, let me just run and show you something. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, Moses had just died. And Joshua was lamenting the death of Moses. And God gave him a period of time to grieve. Some of you have recently gone through a, a death or anything. And it's okay. It's okay to have a time to grieve. But grieving does not last always. Healing happens after grief. So God says to, God says to Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now you need to pick up where Moses left off. Now you knew Moses was a man of boldness. Moses was a man of, of integrity and power. But he's not here. Quit making excuses of what it used to be like. And you start doing what you need to do. Yeah. In chapter 5 it says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will never leave you or forsake you. Verse 6, be strong and be courageous because you will lead these people to inherit a land that I have sworn to your ancestors to give them. Verse 7, be strong and be very courageous. Uh, be, uh, be careful to obey all uh, the, the law that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn to the right or to the left that you may be successful in whatever, wherever you go. Verse 11, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on that word day and night. Watch this. So that you may be careful to do everything that's written in, when again says, then you shall be prosperous and successful. So I'm finding something here. That prosperity and success is born out of a spirit of boldness. Interesting, you can search this out. You know the Bible talks about fear? It calls it a spirit of fear. But it is never called a spirit of, bold, a, a spirit of boldness. So we know that fear is a spirit. It is diabolical. It is against God. There's no excuse. 
But boldness is really found in Christ. I, this is my passion. I want to surround myself. I want to surround myself with bold. Not, not women, I don't, I'm not trying to skirt you. I'm trying to get our men to a whole different place. I, I want to surround myself with bold men. Men that have said, yeah, I'm unashamed to tell you that I've given my life to Christ. I, yeah, yeah, I've signed, I've, I've signed the dotted line. I'm here to serve God, and I've connected with other men that have made up their mind I'm going to be bold. I'm going to teach my sons and my daughters how to be bold. I'm going to teach my grandkids how to be bold. Glory to God. That's my passion. That's my passion. I'll tell you what. Just about every woman that I know, you know what, you know what they want from their husband? They want their husband to be bold. That boldness, that, that boldness gives Pastor Dorothy a sense of confidence. Not that she'd have by herself, but, you know, it's, it's like, you know, my husband will stand with me. My husband will protect me. I want this church to say, I'll tell you what, I want this church to be able to say, you know, I know we got great men in the church, but I'll tell you, I know one thing about my pastor. He'll protect me. Let someone come here and b b bother you. I will hit them with anything that's not nailed down. <laughs> and if, 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 if that's not right, then pray for me and I'll... <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way I live my life. Okay? God says, here, here's what I'll do for you. I'm going to make you bold. That, and it says, watch this. Verse 9 says, have not I commanded you? Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay? Listen, listen very quickly to the six commands about boldness out of this passage here. One, it says, be bold and be strong. Matter of fact, it, that really repeats it three times in verse 6, 7, and 8. 6, 7, and 9. Secondly, it says, observe to do what is written in the law. In other words, get your perception right. Get your perception right. Quit looking at what's not working and start looking at what works. Yes. Hello? Amen. Yeah. Number three, do not vacillate. Don't to the left or to the right. In other words, stay focused right here. If anything's wrong with our world right now, it's the fact that our whole world is double-minded. I, I, I know I'm going to offend someone here, but I got a problem with Dr. Fauci. <laughs> One day he's over here, yeah. next day over here. Yeah. One day you don't wear a mask, next day you wear three masks. Oh. Yeah, and a double-minded man's unstable in all his ways. Okay, but, you know, I'm not just knocking Dr. I'm, I'm knocking some of us. We claim that we love God. We claim that, that, that we want the fullness of God. We, we claim that we want to walk in faith, but yet we shroud ourselves in fear. God says, come out from among them and be separate. The fourth thing, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Interesting, out of your mouth. You got to guard the words that come out of your mouth. You got you to, tell you what, you got to start believing and speaking faith and quit speaking fear. You got to quit talking about what I don't have. We start talking about what we do have. We got in the fullness of God. That's exactly what Peter and John said. Silver and gold I have it done. Really, really, you let, let's look, guy. I know you got your little cup out there because you want some money, but we are broke. <laughs> but I got something that you really need. Hallelujah. And it's called power. Everybody say power. power. I want to say it, but I want you to put the emphasis on, first, on the first syllable. Power. power. Glory to God. We got to start letting the devil know that we got power. Glory to God. Start speaking to your stuff. Mountains were never put before you for you to climb. Mountains were put for you to move. If you say to this mountain, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Move. And God, the Bible says that our faith will move mountains. So we, we practice moving stuff. The fifth thing it says, don't be afraid. The sixth thing it says, and don't, 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 don't be discouraged. I know we live in some 
perilous times that have been ravaged by fear. I've heard people say, well, things will get worse and they're not going to get any better. I don't know what kind of God you serve. <laughs> because I'll tell you what, things may get a whole lot worse. But the anointing of my God, my life, is going to get a whole lot better. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I love to tell you about Isaac. Isaac, Isaac was dealing with, with a shutdown. Isaac was dealing with, with, with a famine. And everyone, there was no jobs and everything. You know what Isaac did? Isaac started business when there was a famine. He became a well digger because he knew that this family is only going to live for a, a short while. I'm going to start my business now because pretty soon the famine is going to be over. Everybody's going to need water. Glory to God. <laughs> Isaac learned how to work the system. Look what it says again about boldness. And then it's past the same Joshua. It says, prosperity will follow you. That's verse 7. Verse 8 says that you will design your way to be prosperous. Next verse says, because of your boldness, you will have good success. The Bible says because of your boldness, God will attach himself like this, that God will attach himself to you wherever you go. I will be with you. Glory to God. Let me start shutting this down for you because I want to pray for you and we have communion before you leave. I want this to be very direct. Fear is demonic. Say that with me out loud if you will. Fear is demonic. And it's not that we don't get attacked. It's not that we don't get unsaddled for a little bit. But we're not going to live in that spirit of fear. I already told you fear is having faith in the demonic. Courage is having faith in the sovereignty of God. Fear is paralyzing. Fear is paralyzing. We get shocked. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't move. I'm so afraid I can't. I can't. I can't speak. That's not God. Fear will render the person helpless and hopeless. Fear will, will render the one who's, who's living in fear, they'll be helpless and they'll be hopeless. The spirit of fear partners with the spirit of intimidation. Okay, I, I don't have time. Well, maybe, maybe we'll do this in weeks to come. But it's amazing when, you, when you're talking about uh, uh, spirits. Demons learn to partner up. Demons find some, some, another demon to connect with. Okay? That's why that Jezebel spirit will connect with other spirits. That's why that spirit of intimidation will connect with other spirits. The spirit of, that spirit of intimidation will, will connect with the spirit of sickness and disease. I'm, I'm fearful, therefore, I'm, 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 sh I'm shutting down my immune system. Oh, let me, uh, yeah, this wasn't in my notes, but w if, if, if anything has happened in 2021, I mean, and people are dying, not because of COVID. I'm not here to say COVID doesn't exist. I got that. Okay, you know, I'm I, I'm I'm pretty sure my wife that we had it. We got real sick about a year ago, and I'd, we just thought it was a flu, and we lost our taste, and we lost our smell. We did all that, you know. But I'm I'm glad I knew I understand. In the midst of that, the kingdom of God still lives with inside me. Glory to God, and I still preach, and I still pray, and I still prophesied. Why? Because I understand the principles of the kingdom. You know, we we we, we got to get understand the principles of the kingdom, but. But if anything has happened in our world, people are dying not because of a virus. They're dying because of fear. And the Bible warns in the last days, men's hearts will fail them because of fear. Fear will chew away at the moral fibers of our success in an attempt to uh, de uh, demolish all our cords of faith. I read the other day that all these churches that have shut down, 
that more than 60% of churches will never open again. How sad is that? <laughs> but brother, brother Ron said that's good news for us. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 need, we need a bigger building because those folks got to go to church someplace, you know. <laughs> Glory. They might as well go someplace where they're going to hear the word of faith. Glory to God. Finally, faith is the antidote to fear. Fear cannot stand in the presence of faith. Fear cannot stand in the presence of faith. And I submit to you this morning, that you are people of faith. I'm asking you, do not be afraid to raise your level of faith because it will take you into a place you've never been. It'll bless you going in and coming out. Hallelujah. While everybody else is falling apart, you're rising up. Amen. While, while, while everything is shutting down, you're standing up. Glory to God. Why everyone else? Why, why everyone else has been muzzled because they can't open their mouth, they can't sing. You start singing out loud. <laughs> glory to God. You know. Yeah. I, what was that guy's name? An elf? That he's what did he say about singing? You sing out loud. Yeah. We 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 just serve God with full capacity. Glory to God. I want to encourage you. Get filled with God's presence. Peter and John, they were considered unlearned, ignorant men. But their boldness was noticed. And was noticed because these men had spent time with Jesus. So how much time, really, be honest with, be honest with yourself, how much time are you really trying to spend with the Lord? We spend a lot of time with our businesses. We spend a whole lot of time with a whole bunch of other stuff. But how much time do we spend with Jesus? And we've got to find that time. I'm going to spend quality time with the Lord. I want you blessed. Let's pray. Father God, I trust that I did precisely what you said do. While we're praying, if you're here this morning, just about to raise hand, you said, Pastor Gabe, I really don't. I really don't know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I got a glimpse of him. I've been to church and I know a lot about him. But I really have not yet made him Lord of my life. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you to do, to, to do something bold. I come against a spirit of fear coming upon you right now because this is not here to hurt you. This is here to help you. But you're here this morning. Bishop, I don't know. Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. Just by an upraised hand, you're saying, I need prayer. I need to get things right. Is there anybody in the house? Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. This is a God thing. Anyone else? All you're saying is the fact that I realize that may, may, maybe you've known, Lord, you've drifted. And you know the Spirit of God is calling you back. Or maybe Satan has really ravaged your life and tore your, tore your life up. And you're not sure about eternity. You want to say, you know, Bishop, I want to, I, I, I want to agree with these other two. I, I, I need to make a profession of faith. Is there anyone in the house? Anyone else? Do it quickly. I'm not going to prolong this. Glory to God. Everybody praying. I want to ask these two ladies that responded. Why don't you come down here with me for a minute? I just want to speak very directly to you. Glory to God. Ladies, look at me. This is not religious stuff. This is eternal stuff. And a lot of times we miss out. We miss out on God because we got a lot going on here. But it ain't necessar necessarily happening here.
wanted to take you out a long time ago. And God, by his grace, says, I'm not going to let that happen. And God loves you with an everlasting love. This is a new day. Yeah, this could be a new day. Throwing out the old. Throwing out the old and accepting. Hang on. And accepting the new. This is vital. Carrie, I know you've made that profession of faith before. And, and I know you get busy with stuff. But the greatest thing you can do is for you. I'm going to use this word because, because you're a dancer. You get this. God the Father is saying, it's time for you to get on point. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. We can know a whole lot about God, but yet we're not on point. And if we're not on point, we're just, it's, just, it's just not going to work. Yeah. There's no balance, she says. That's right. Spiritually, is the exact same thing. God is calling me. God is calling us to get on point because there want to be balance. And I'm here to tell you that there are some wonderful women of God in this body right here that would just want to love you and walk with you and help you and speak into your life. You know, don't be afraid to let them be mother figures to you. The Word of God says to you, older women. Now, I didn't say who that is, okay? You older women, teach the younger women. And don't try to teach them to be like you. Teach them to be like Jesus. You make sure that these women are in church on Wednesday night. You make sure that they're in church on Sunday. Before they leave, if they'll give it to you, get their phone numbers, follow up with them. I just want to love you. I just want to speak into your life. That's really what young ladies need to be mothered. And I know, I know your mama's here. That's a, she'd just be one of the mamas, but yeah. Okay? But you need to be mothered. To the younger men that are here, men need to be fathered. Most of the men in this room here, most of you, are, are carrying father wounds. I'm not saying all, but most. And that's what's hindering you from excelling. Listen, we're going to pray. Why don't you pray this prayer out loud with me? Okay? And really, it's a prayer of repentance. We're asking God for, for full forgiveness of our sin. And the moment that happens, you don't ever have to talk about it again. God will forgive you. God will put it all under the blood. God will let you have a new day. Quit trying to create a religion that doesn't work. you got to get on point. Glory to God. I want to have some, I, I need some women, some spiritual women, just to come and stand with Rachel. I need some spiritual women to come. Where's, where's your mama? You come down here, mama. Glory to God. Just, just surround them. Praise God. Father God, as we stand, Lord God, with these ladies, I speak a blessing of their life. Lord, I'm going to help them forget those things which are behind. And we're going to press toward those things which are ahead. Lord, it's time, Lord God, that we get on point and have a passion to become godly men and godly women. And God, as we pray a prayer right now, we cancel Satan's assignment in Jesus' name. I want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner and I have need of a Savior. I come before you right now thanking you for your forgiveness. I know your grace is powerful and I agree with you that I want to put all my sins under the blood of Jesus. I denounce my past and I accept my future. I am born again I'm a new creation. Things are different. And I'm believing God for a breakthrough in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Both lift your hands up to God and just begin to praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.
not not just ladies around them, but some of you other ladies. 